So on uh, Mustang Survival inflatable PFDs, the, uh, the quality control actually begins before we get the raw materials to make the product. Um, not only does Mustang Survival have to follow uh, UL and Coast Guard guidelines for both Transport Canada and the US um, Coast Guard, we also, uh, our, our vendors of our raw materials are audited and inspected and have uh, regular follow-ups as well. Um, and we follow that through all of our materials by having a UL label on everything that we use to manufacture an approved UL or ULC inflatable. Um, this is on uh, bladder fabrics, webbings, uh, the inflation kits that include the cylinders and the inflation bodies, and uh, any of the structural threads and structural materials that hold the, the product together. Um, they're strictly regulated from uh, the, the inception of their production through to us converting them into the finished good that you use. Um, in terms of inflatables specifically, uh, they go through quite a bit of destructive evaluation before we can actually start to make a product. So uh, before we start any welding, all of our products are, uh, are trialed and tested and then the settings for the weld machine have to be tuned and those settings are tested in three ways. Uh, we do uh, what's called a seam seal adhesion test where we'll take samples of the weld seam at prescribed locations that we have learned over time uh, develop a good weld and we'll measure these for tensile strength. How, how well is the bond made? Uh, we'll also do a, uh, an in-production overpressure test where we will add more pressure than the design pressure, typically about two or three times the design pressure on the bladder to make sure that it will, uh, it will handle that and that allows us to test the continuous weld seam. And then finally we also do a burst, uh, burst pressure test where we'll uh, plug the bladder into an air supply and inflate it until it reaches uh, the point of failure and bursts. And there's minimum pressures required for that. Uh, we're standing in front of the, uh, the buoyancy and overpressure tank that we use to measure buoyancy of foam products and inflatables. Um, every lot of every foam and inflatable product has to go through a buoyancy test to ensure that all of the materials and the processes that were used to manufacture that lot created a product that met minimum buoyancy requirements. Uh, for foam products, as you can see here, we do it on the, the bare foam panels to ensure not only is it the right buoyancy, but is it the right distribution, front to rear. If we have uh, enough buoyancy on the front versus the rear, you get self-riding. If it's an even distribution of buoyancy front to rear, there's no force to be able to rotate the body. And of course, if you have more at the back than at the front, it'll be the opposite of self-riding. Uh, but we also use these tanks to do two very important tests on our inflatables. We will inflate these, uh, we'll, we'll take an inflatable and we'll uh, inflate it to the minimum design pressure, which is developed during the design phase of the product. It is the pressure that all of the product testing undergoes at the third party laboratories like UL, or, and uh, it's also agreed with the Coast Guard um, for, uh, for regular use um, by, by the wearer. So we'll inflate the uh, PFD to the minimum design pressure, submerge it in one of these weighted tanks and measure the buoyancy as a result of the difference between the empty tank and the tank with the inflatable. And we leave it here for six hours wet. And over a six hour period submerged in water, you're not allowed to lose more than 5% of your total buoyancy. Um, typically because of the, uh, the bladder fabric relaxing under pressure, we usually gain buoyancy actually. But um, this is a, a per lot test. And depending on the size of the lot, it can be anywhere from one to 10 units per lot. It's also a destructive test. Um, obviously we don't sell these units, but uh, what we will do after the six hours is uh, something kind of crazy where um, you have to replicate the situation where somebody wearing an inflatable PFD may have inflated it through the oral tube and then pulled off the CO2 cylinder to create more pressure than the product was intended to have. So not only do we do that, we also add another 20%. So it's an extreme pressure event that you should never see in the real world, but we confirm that the bladder of the finished product as made can, ma can maintain the buoyancy for a minimum of five minutes after being submerged for six hours in the water and also still in the water. Um, other tests that we do per lot involve uh, strength testing of the product where we'll uh, mount the inflatable onto a, uh, a steel frame that resembles a human torso, and we call this the gallows. We'll, we'll pull to, uh, to a strength that's described by the standard in the file for the product, 
and uh, while inflated, make sure that you can grab by the corner of the device and not, not tear it, not deflate it. So we'll inflate it, mount it on the frame, and then literally try to pull it apart. And at that point, uh, if we pass that test, we're able to release the product. Assuming we've passed all three of those tests, we are now able to uh, start manufacturing on those settings. And those settings are used to manufacture a lot of products. And I don't mean many products, I mean an individual lot where um, a number is assigned to the bladder and that number is held as a unique combination of products uh, through to the delivery to, to the end user. So we, uh, we RF weld all of the bladders after that using the settings that were validated. And then just to be safe, we, uh, we repeat. So uh, at, we bookend the testing at the beginning and at the end of the production. So after we've welded the, uh, the quantity of bladders that we need to make for the production run, we do another run and we repeat the seam seal, the overpressure, and the burst. So we've already done destructive testing on six bladders before the bladder is even sewn into the finished good. And that all occurs here in the weld, set, uh, weld station. Once the bladders are manufactured um, and we've got passing results for the pre and the post testing, uh, they get uh, consolidated and sent to our sewing teams who will install them with the, the harness and the uh, shell and the structural materials. And uh, those as a combination are now one lot that will never be separated. Uh, once that lot's complete, it goes into a quarantine area where our quality control teams will then take it and uh, do some lot testing. That involves uh, sampling plans where we uh, have to pull, um, depending on the size of the lot, between one and 10 units um, uh, per lot. And uh, we will do tests on those that'll again include um, product strength testing, um, overpressure testing, and we do buoyancy testing. Um, following that, 100%, um, so each and every inflatable that is made by Mustang is given a 12 to 14 hour air retention test where we will inflate it to a test pressure that was designed and agreed upon at the time of the product's inception and uh, with UL and with Coast Guard and Transport Canada. And those pressures uh, are, are held for between 12 and 14 hours. We measure after the 14 or 12 hour period and you're not allowed to lose more than 10% of that volume. We typically don't lose more than about one or 2%, which is the, the relaxing of the bladder fabric. Um, so 100%, Every, each and every single Mustang Survival Inflatable has been air retention tested, proven to hold air for minimum 12 hours, and uh, proven that um, all the inflation mechanisms will work. They're then uh, vacuum packed, where we uh, reduce all air out of the bladder to get the, the tightest pack possible using a vacuum system, um, and uh, packaged in the, the retail packaging you see, and uh, carefully put to, uh, put to shelf to be delivered.